Hey everybody, Jared Meredith back with you once again. Excited to read out of the word of the Lord and share what's on our heart for you today. And my prayer is that you would take this seriously, look into your heart and see how you can apply this, that you can grow in God and for him. I want to read out of the book of 1 Thessalonians in the fifth chapter, and I'll start reading at verse 14. And it says here, Now we may exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, prove all things, and hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray that God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, but also will do it. The thought that began to come into my mind as I read that was powerful and to the point messaging that as I take this and interpret it for my life, there's plenty of growth and opportunity. Let's put it that way. I want to focus on a verse in that chapter at verse 19. This is there to quench not the spirit. I want to spend a few moments in teaching and preaching today, sharing with you a word that the Lord has put on our heart. Pay attention with me for just a moment. You see, the voice of the Spirit of God is as gentle as a summer breeze. So gentle that unless you are living in complete fellowship with oneness with God, you may just miss it. The sense of warning and restraint that the Spirit gives comes to us in the most amazing and gentle of ways. But if you are not sensitive enough to detect his voice, you may very well quench it and your spiritual life will be impaired. This sense of restraint will always come as a still small voice, referenced in 1 Kings 19 and 12, so faint that no one except a saint of God would notice it. Hear me today. Beware if in sharing your personal testimony, you continually have to look back saying, once a number of years ago, I was saved. You see, if you have to put your hand to the plow and are walking in the light, there is no looking back. The past is instilled in the present wonder of fellowship and oneness with God. If you get out of the light, you become a sentimental Christian and live only on your memories, and your testimony will have a hard, metallic ring to it. And beware of trying to cover up your present refusal to walk in the light by recalling your past when you did walk in the light. 1 John 1 and 7 reference there. Whenever the Spirit gives you that sense of restraint, call a halt and make things right. Or else you will go on quenching and grieving the Spirit without even knowing it. If I can talk to some of that in a personal applicability, I will first start out by saying that I absolutely love stirring the gift of God in my heart. And there are plenty of times when I'm suffering in the moment that when I look back and I count my blessings, that it is of an encouragement to me and helps me to continue on by having that encouragement to apply in my heart as I continue trying in the moment that I'm in. And what we have just read and what we are talking about is a very stark difference between using our past to motivate our present to head towards our future. And then there's a difference of that in using my past to justify why I'm not moving further or making progress. I want to be very clear about this teaching. Stirring up your heart is important by the things that God has done. But only doing that begins to cause us to not walk in the moment that we are in and looking back at moments where we were walking in a better pattern or in a better place mentally or physically or spiritually. 
And the Lord in these times is trying to show us that regardless of the circumstance that we are in, that we should not be quenching the spirit that is trying to move for us right now. We may recall a moment where God did amazing and wonderful things, but those things should be provoking our spiritual being now so that when we are faced with present danger and things out of our control or bigger than we are, that we're using those memories and those moments to fuel our desire to walk in the light today. But if we are not using that to help us illuminate the temptations and the sin and the, and the troubles that are going on around us, we may be walking in the dark and remembering walking in the light. There's a big difference in walking in the dark and remembering that you walked in the light as opposed to remembering that you walked in the light and helping it to light up a moment in darkness. As we quench the spirit, we begin to choke out the moment of the now. It's really easy to feel good and reminisce on the things we know God has done. I've heard it plenty of times in church. I've heard it plenty of times through loved ones and family members and testimonies all through my life. I have heard how God has moved. But it's not just what I've heard of what God has done that has made an impact to me and has helped me to grow as a Christian. But it was also in the moment where people were continuing to try and continuing to walk in the light or to keep fighting and keep obeying and yielding to the presence of God. Because that what that showed me was that we weren't just looking back on a time when things were better, but we were looking at a moment where God blessed us enough to be strong enough to keep standing now. So that's the word I want to give you today. If we are leaning in on our past only to remember how big God was, then we are quenching how big God is today. If we are holding back on him because we don't feel like we're the preacher we used to be or the prophet we used to be or the singer that we used to be or the exhorter that we used to be or the prayer warrior that we used to be and we keep leaning on what we remember in the past without applying it in the now, my friends, we are quenching the spirit of God. And it's a dangerous place to be in because when we need it to move, we're not going to be able to just use the memories of what we know has happened to stir us. There's also an active decision to continue to walk in the light and abide in his truths and to abstain ourselves from sin. And as these other words were read in this chapter, to rejoice evermore and to treat people fairly and not render evil for evil to anyone and to move ourselves out of the way in the presence of evil. Those things all matter. But as we grieve the spirit by not stirring ourselves to live in the now, we eventually become stuck in the moment that we're in. You see, suppose God brings you to a crisis and you almost endure it, but not completely. He will engineer the crisis again, but this time some of the intensity will be lost. You will have less discernment and more humiliation at having disobeyed. You see, if you continue to grieve his spirit, there will come a time when that crisis cannot be repeated because you have totally quenched him. But if you go on through the crisis, your life will become a hymn of praise to God. Never become attached to anything that continues to hurt God. For you to be free of it, God must be allowed to hurt whatever it may be. And what we're really talking about there is if we continue to quench the moment we're in now and allow God inside of our problem and we allow God inside to help us, if we continue to quench that, then the more that we face it, the less reliant we are going to be on the presence of God. Bitterness will set in. Anger will set in. Envying and strife and jealousy will begin to be in our spirit, in our heart, and in our emotions. And it will begin to make a negative impact to those around us. There is a downstream impact to holding back on when we feel God. That's as plain as I can put it. So if you are in church and you feel like the Lord is moving through you and in you and you quench it and you disobey it, then we are literally holding up downstream blessings that could be coming for us, that could be poured out to potentially other people. And don't get me wrong. I know that God will use other people in a moment of service through the Holy Spirit to get things done. But what I'm talking about is its impact in your life. As you quench that and then you hold back on that and you keep looking back to where you remember it was better, 
you're going to remain stuck in where you are. And God doesn't want anybody stuck. He doesn't want us sitting in the same place for too long before we start walking in the truth that he has given us and the commandments that we've been given to love everyone as we love ourselves, and to love God above all things and to resist evil and that it would be underneath our feet and to know the plan of salvation and what we are truly free from. As if we quench the spirit that gives us wisdom and discernment and knowledge, we begin to miss out on clarity in the midst of a crisis. And God doesn't want us to walk in confusion. He doesn't want us to walk in fear. He said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. And that tells me if I am not quenching his presence and I'm letting it deeper into my life, then these other attributes that I need to be operating in when it is difficult, the spirit will make me to be able when I am not able. The anointing will help me to sing when I don't feel like singing. The, the anointing will help me to preach when I don't even know how many words that I could say longer than five minutes. The power of God will begin to transform your homes and your lives and your marriages and your families. And it'll touch everything that you have going on in your heart. We simply have to recognize whether or not we are quenching what God is trying to do. So, my friend, your testimony is important. Where you have come from is the fuel that helps drive your moment in the now. But don't just lean on your past only. And don't just be remembered as someone who was a fireball 20 years ago. It's time to stir up the flames of what you used to know. To stand and be the child of God you know you can be. And that is preaching I leave you with today. That is a challenge I leave you with today. I hope if you're comfortable sharing this and testifying to other people that you'll take a few minutes and look back at the good that God is doing, but apply it into how you start moving and walking in the light. And as you walk in the light, there will be clarity in the darkness. There'll be authority over your enemy and the devil will have no place to mess with you. God bless you. Use this word. Don't just look in the past. Let it fuel your present to drive your future. God is in it, and I believe it. He will be there with you if you trust him.